ask you to open your Bibles, if you will, please, to Luke's Gospel, in chapter 22. We're going to begin in verse 7, Luke's Gospel, chapter 22 and verse 7. Thank you, ladies, for that song that reminds us the blood will never lose its power. And uh, certainly today, in observance of the Lord's Supper, two elements that the Lord chose to remind us of the sacrifice, the body and the blood. The body and the blood. Those two we observe today in being able to be reminded about the fact of we as believers, how fortunate we are to know that Jesus Christ, you know, everything about this, this uh, the church and uh, being a believer and worshiping together and being willing to assemble together in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and coming together to focus on His sacrifice. And so <clears throat> we're going to let Brother Rodney, if you'll read verse 7, and then in verse uh, let's say in verse 17 would you then stand as he finishes down through verse 23 I'll leave, I'll leave you remain seated until verse 17 Father, in Jesus' name, the name that is lifted above every name on this earth, we, we know today we have no salvation, we have no hope, we have no help without you. There's everything connected to and depending upon what you did 2,000 years ago, a little over, for our transgression, for our iniquity, for our sin, you were willing to go to a cross and die for the debt of our sin. We thank you for that. Let us today focus on that. Let us today honor you and be thankful 
for what you have done. In Jesus' name we all pray, everybody said. Thank you, you may be seated. Our message is entitled today, Give Thanks. If you notice the two times that it is referenced in our Lord's words, in verse 17, and he took the cup and gave thanks. He gave thanks. Then a little bit further down, you see in verse 19, and he took bread. And what did he do? He gave thanks. If our model teacher, if our master teacher, the Lord Jesus Christ, the pattern for you and I, for life on this earth, would be willing to pause at this most important institution of his supper. And if he would pause and say, let's give thanks. If he would pause and say, let's be thankful. And it should be a reminder to all of us how we should be thankful. I mean, if anybody should be thankful, it should be we as believers. Here we're in, you know, a week of Thanksgiving. I'm reminded of how manifold the blessings are that God has bestowed upon me. How many blessings I have. And when I, when I consider today the Lord's Supper and combine, uh, make, making it a, 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 a time in which by prayer and, and by... Uh, honor to the Lord Jesus Christ and just, just coming together like this. I, I, it's a special time, especially on a Sunday morning. It's a special emphasis. And, and the focus is totally, this, 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 the Lord's Supper is totally shining the light completely upon Jesus Christ and what He has done. You, you cannot even approach this supper the Lord's Supper, without that type of focus. I mean, it's, it, it, would be, it would be beyond me to even think that we would be that type of a people that we wouldn't take the time to focus on and to observe that this is the Lord's Supper. It's, it's not ours. It's not this church's. It's, not, it's the Lord's. And, and it reminds us as, as believers that, that the... The only reason, I mean, when you focus on his body and his blood, you can't help but understand the, the soberness and the, the focus and, and the, the, uh, the, the importance of, of the Lord and, and his sacrifice on our behalf. You, 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 you approach this like nothing else you've ever done in your lifetime. Each time we, we observe it, each time we partake, each time we come together and do this, it, it, is, a, it is a vivid reminder. It is a contrast to anything else in our life, and, and it's just so special a moment that we can set apart our time and our life, and, and literally by your presence today and by your participation, isn't it, isn't it a wonderful thing that part of this is we're, we're just simply saying, Lord, thank you. And I think that's a good thing for us to do. I think that's an important thing for us to do. I think that that's, that, that uh, literally qualifies us as a family of God that, that we are observing what the Lord has done and we're being thankful for what he's done on our behalf. I, I just can't emphasize it enough. And, and isn't that important to you today as you come to this special, very, very special moment? And I, I, can't, I can't even begin to tell you that a lot of thoughts go through my mind. We as a church 
family, Bible Baptist Church, we, we are observing the Lord's Supper together and people have come and, and it's a moment in our life that we, that we say, Lord, thank you. Thank you for all that you've done. There's three things I want to bring out uh, that we will give thanks for. First of all, I want to give thanks to the Lord for the past. What he has done can't be, can't be uh, preached enough, can't be talked about enough, can't be thought about enough. I mean, we ought to rise up thanking the Lord and we ought to go through the day thanking the Lord and we ought to, we ought to pillow our head at night thanking the Lord and, and, and for what? For what He did for us. For what He has done. You and I were... I, 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 listen, I, I was not there physically when the Lord went through His passion. But I have, Mark, I have Matthew, I have Mark, I have Luke, and I have John that are eyewitness, eyewitnesses to this event. And not, not only just his passion, but his life. I, I've got to thank the Lord for, first of all, his coming to this earth, for his willingness to come and be a part of this. Can, can you just imagine leaving heaven? And that's what, that's what Jesus did. He left the splendors and the glory of a perfect place. And He came and entered the womb of Mary. And God was born. Emmanuel, God with us. We go from his birth, taking a body that he would borrow for the 33 and a half year journey and for the purpose and for the, for the one intent, and that was to go to the cross, pay the debt that he did not owe, but my debt and your debt Our sin, He was willing to go to the cross for us. The past. I've got to tell Him thank you. Thank you for coming. The first coming of Jesus Christ to this earth. I've got to, I've got to say thank you, Lord, for your first coming, for living on this earth, and for the record that we have of your first coming coming to this earth and, and, and for the word of God, for the, for the record that I have of that 33 and a half year journey. I've got to be thankful for what he has accomplished. I've got to be thankful for all that uh, he chose to teach on this earth so that I could follow that example. That I would have a supreme example for my life and for all believers to follow. We have the same we have the same master teacher. We have the same savior, common salvation. We, 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 we get to have this. Nothing's changed. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. He hasn't changed. He didn't change. He didn't, his plan and his mission was accomplished. Everything was done. But I got I to be, I, when I look back at the past, I, 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 think, of, I think of the, I focus on the Lord and, and what He did through His birth, His life, His teachings, His healing, everything pointing to the cross. Every step that He took, every beat of His heart while He was here on earth, everything was to accomplish the payment for sin. Every sin. Every sin! Not one left out. Every sin paid for. And how is that done? We're reading now where the Lord knows His time is short. And so He meets with His disciples and gives this institution of this supper. He takes two very simple 
elements. By the way, uh, the, uh, the Lord took uh, something very common, two, two things to represent. First of all, his body and then, and then his blood that he would shed. And this unleavened bread. So there would be no, it would be a picture, a type and picture. Every time we observe the Lord's Supper, we're reminded that Jesus Christ had no sin of his own. Unleavened, un, unleavened bread. You will partake today and as we distribute the bread and, and it will remind you of that uh, body that Jesus Christ occupied and that body that ultimately was taken in Roman He Listen, we, we, we could start with the fact that he was beaten for us. He was smitten. Some 50 to 60 men would walk by and spit in his face and with open palmed hands and clenched fists, they began to pummel the face of Jesus, slapping him with open palmed hands or with a clenched fist, spitting upon him. Plucking his beard from his face and, 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 and then and then taking him and scourging him with a cat of nine tails, a leather, leather straps that at the end of those straps was tied bone or glass. They literally tore and ripped the flesh off of Jesus' back. I mean, think about all the things he endured for us, that body. And then what did they do with that body? He willingly laid his arms down on a cross and he had Roman spikes put through his hands and his feet. And there he was, suspended on a cross between two eternities, between earth and heaven, between heaven and hell. And there it is. There he is on the cross. I mean, my mind, I, I, look, at, I look at the past and I... I envision all the things that he did and that body that was given for me and I'll, I'll, I'll partake today of that body in symbolism by the taking of unleavened bread. It's symbolism. We, we, we will take today and be reminded. Our Lord's Supper table that used to sit here and many times we, we've had it in here and we have our display now, but it says, this do in remembrance of me. In remembrance of me. In, what are we doing? What are we doing with this Lord's Supper? We're remembering His body. We're remembering the ultimate sacrifice. And we're focused very sharply and keenly upon that, that body for, for, to be used for sacrifice. It was His gift. Us. And, and, I, and so when I, when I think of the, the body of Jesus, I, 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 I think of that's what it took for the Lord to come to earth and to live here 33 and a half years. And that body had coursing through it something very, very unique and different and special. And it was, it was, the, it was the sinless blood. Mary provided a body. Mary provided a body that the Holy Spirit of God infusing divine life and light from above into the womb at the dividing of a cell in her body, the blood of God. And it was perfect blood. And it was sinless blood. And it was the only blood that could be shed on a cross each and every drop from the moment in the Garden of Gethsemane when he began to sweat, as it were, great drops of blood from his brow for me and for you. And then throughout all the passion that we've described up to the cross and all of this bloody execution. He was willing to, en to endure and to go through this for one purpose. 
was to pay for our sin. We've got to be reminded about that. We've got to be focused on that. And that is what we understand from Scripture is, it, is this blood. Go, go, if you would, please, to Hebrews chapter 9 and look with me there at verse 11. But Christ being come a high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by what? His own blood. You're, re you're reading the core of the gospel and how it was accomplished through the shedding of His own blood, not the blood of bulls, of goats, of sheep, no other sacrifice could be used. No other sacrifice would be sufficient. No other sacrifice could take care of the debt of our sin but His own blood. And what did He do with His own blood? He took it and entered in what? As a high priest, prophet, priest, and king. That's Jesus. He took His own blood into the very holy of holies of heaven and he sprinkled his own blood for a sacrifice pleasing to God. God was pleased by the death of his own son, by the shedding of his own son's blood, and by that blood, notice it, he entered in how many times, folks? How many times? Once. Once. I will remind you, Jesus Christ came to the earth the first time for the purpose and mission of the important work of the cross. And He only did it. He will only do it. Listen, he only, it only took one time. And the Bible says He obtained what for us? What did He obtain? What did He Obtain. Everybody has to look at that and realize what was done by the work of the cross, by Jesus on the cross. What did He do? He did something that no one else could do for us on our behalf. I got to teach this morning. Brother John Duggar is gone. He's visiting with his son, which is a blessing. Pray for him and his wife as they do that. But I got to teach this morning from Psalm 107 the four vivid pictures, only got to two of them, but the four vivid pictures of where God found us and how He found us. And One of them is, the first one is the wilderness of sin and then the prison of sin. He found us in, in, in prison. He found us in the sickness of sin and He found us on the sea of sin. Four, four vivid pictures. I mean, if you can't, if you, listen, if you, if you don't realize this morning that God, listen, God sent Jesus Christ and He's the only one that cared and He's the only one that could take care of the debt of our sin. And He's the only one that did what He did. And He did it, listen, he, he, this is what He purchased for us. This is what He obtained. E, let's everybody say it. Eternal redemption for us. It's an amazing story of love. It's an amazing story of grace. It's, it's beyond our wildest imagination that God would love us so much that He'd dispatch His Son to this earth and He accomplished it and it's done. Never to be repeated, never to be done again. Again, reading Hebrews chapter nine and verse 11. Now look at verse 13. Neither, look at verse 13. <clears throat> Did we miss one? I'm sorry. That's all right. Verse 13, But for if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, look at this, how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered without himself without spot to God purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. The 
best deal you ever received in your lifetime is the offer of God for eternal life through His Son, Jesus Christ. And if you have done that, if that event has taken place in your lifetime, you're a very, very blessed person indeed. You, you are a blessed person to be sitting in this room and knowing in your heart of hearts, if I died, I'd be in heaven. Not based on my works, but based on the work that he accomplished on the cross. I am telling you today, we're on our way to heaven together based on the work of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. And that alone is the reason why we are going. I give thanks to, to the Lord for the past. I want to thank the Lord for the present. How about that? I want to thank the Lord for right now. How good's God to you today? <laughs> well, then let's thank Him from our hearts today. Lord, thank you right now for all. Listen, I, I, I 11 year old boy, I trusted Christ. I'm 59 years of age now, and I, I'm, I'm more thankful now than I ever have been. This is a great blessing right now, present tense, to know I'm on the launch pad. I'm ready for heaven. I need to thank Him. I need to thank you. You need to thank him today. Look at, look at 1 John 1, 1 through 10. Look at, look at the fellowship we get to enjoy. Look, look at what we have. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, our, and our hand, hands have handled the word of life. Talking about Jesus. For the life was manifested, made known. We have seen it, John said, and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested or made known unto us, that which we have seen and de heard declare we unto you, that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with who? The Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. <laughs> and these things write we unto you. That'll be our last verse. That, these things write we unto you that what? That you could have some full joy. That you could enjoy the journey. If you're not enjoying the journey, the old devil, he's got his foot on your neck. And you, and you listen, you're, you're, living, you're living under the, the, the oppression of, of demonic influence. You need, you need to rise up from that. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And you're not here to be a, a, a second-class citizen. Listen, you're, you're God's youngin. And you can, you can live a life that is so full and so fulfilled. You can have the abundant life. How about that? Here's, here's, what, here's what's guaranteed to you. Fellowship with God and His Son, Jesus Christ. I wouldn't take nothing for my journey now. <laughs> I, love, I love serving the Lord. And He opens the doors. He opens the way. He leads. He guides. He does everything. The, the precious Holy Spirit of God dwells my life. And, and I live in Him. And He lives in me. And I, and I love the Lord today. And everything about living life on planet Earth the Lord is able to help us. Just, what, what, do we, what do we have? Why do, why do we want to leave lip prints? Why, are we, why do we want to live in a, in a state of uh, confusion when he's done everything for us to show us the way and guide the way? Third thing, I want to thank him for the future. You know what? You know what it's all about? <coughs> We've got a future. Hello, people. If you're saved, you got a future. You know what it is? Heaven. <laughs> you, got a, you got a home in heaven. Jesus said in John 14, He said, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. We've got a future. <laughs> now, you know what we need to do? Thank the Lord for the past, the present, and the future. But then let's do this. Let's take introspection. You know what part of the Lord's Supper is? Looking in. What's in your heart? What's in your heart? The Lord knows. And this is a moment that we focus on the body and blood of Jesus, but it's for a purpose. It's to remind us He is the one. It's all the focus on Jesus. But He also said, don't take this unworthily. I want you to, I want you to think about it. You're my children. 
sons and daughters in faith, I want you to think in, I want you to think about what's in your heart. The Lord's Supper brings us to that moment. We've got to look inside. As we prepare now, we'll begin with this invitation. Let's bow our heads. And then we'll prepare for the Lord's Supper. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for what you're doing in our midst. There's hearts in this room. They'll come. and Lord, they'll, you said if we confess our sin, you're faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's stand together with heads bowed. There's needs in this room. It could be you're here today and you need an altar of prayer, a place of you want to, you want to, you know you're saved, but the fellowship hadn't been sweet. You've been walking a guilty distance. Maybe you have something in your heart with a brother or sister in this room. There's something burdening you. There's something that's robbed you of your joy. You say, preacher, I used to enjoy what the Lord was doing in my life. And what happened? The joy of the Lord is our strength. Has your focus gotten off the Lord? People will disappoint you, but God never has. He's prepared for us an eternity with Him forever in a perfect place. What's your heart say to you today? Maybe you need a church home, a place of fellowship on our way to heaven together. Maybe you're here this morning, you've never been saved. But all of this today is so that Focus on the Lord. Sean, would you sing? Have Why don't you come? Just come. As the Lord leads you, as we Lord, think about the Lord's Supper, let us look inside our own hearts. Thou art the potter. Thou art the potter. I am I the, the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will while I am waiting yielded and still Father you know every heart in this room thank you for this time together precious people have come into this room for the purpose of focusing on you. We ask you to bless in Jesus' name. Thank you. You may be seated. At this time, we will be distributing the, Lord's, the elements of the Lord's Supper, the bread and the cup. Inviting all those in the back and any, uh, anyone else that would like to come to partake in the Lord's Supper. As soon as we have everyone ready, we will commence with our receiving of the bread and the pure fruit of the vine is what this is. Grape juice representing. Did you know I traveled to Israel three times. Each time we stopped by Cana of Galilee and they gave us wedding wine. You know what that is? Grape juice. Some of the best grape juice I ever tasted in my life is from Israel. And uh, it's a common drink in that. It's un, it's un, uh, has no fermentation to it. It's just grape juice. And that's what this is. It best represents the Lord's blood. He chose it. And then the, the unleavened bread, we will partake in that in just a moment.
as you receive the uh, unleavened bread and the grape juice and look down at it, isn't it, isn't it amazing you can't help but hold it and look at it without thinking? This is, a, this is the Lord's, this represents symbolically the Lord's body and His blood and we get to enjoy this moment together of sweet, sweet fellowship with the Lord. And that's what this is. Just sweet fellowship with the Lord. But we're reminded of His sacrifice. We're reminded of what it took to purchase our salvation. And I, I just, every time I partake, I think of these things. And we're thankful that we are here today to observe this Lord's Supper, the Thanksgiving week kind of sets a good good tone for our for this week, the Lord willing. If He allows us to live and tarries His coming, we're we're gonna be together with family. But this is a great time to be together with family too, the family of God. I appreciate it all the preparation and Ed's going to come up and I'm going to ask JP if you'd come up and help pray we'll get a microphone up there should be one up here somewhere Howie would you get it for us while well, you can just turn it on for him and in just a moment Black in just a moment, we'll have a prayer. You know, the Lord gave thanks. So we'll do that same thing. I'll read scripture. And we'll, we'll go through the observing of this Lord's Supper. We'll have Brother Ed, if you'll ask the Lord to bless the bread in just a moment. And then uh, Brother JP, he'll come and ask the blessing on and we'll focus on and I thank the Lord, Brother Ed, for this bread and what it means and then the blood, what it means. Thank Him for it. As soon as we're ready, we'll take all the time we need, no problem. that would like to please acknowledge our ushers raise your hand if you have not would like to partake with us you guys up in the booth have yours all right you can join your families if you'd like to anybody else that would like to participate. The scripture says in Matthew 26 and verse 26, we're going to use Matthew's teaching here where, the, where he says, and as they were eating, Jesus took bread 
and blessed it. Brother Ed, if you would please at this time ask this blessing on, on this bread. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so very much, Lord, for what you have done for us. Lord, for sending Jesus, who died for our sins, who gave his life because he wanted to. Because he wanted to have fellowship with each and every one of us forever. Lord, we love you. We thank you for this sacrifice. Lord, just bless us now as we go through this Lord's Supper. Let us remember what you have done for us. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. He took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Sean, just one this morning. Now we'll have JP, if he will, please lead us in prayer for the cup. Dear Lord, we come now in front of, before you, dear Lord, just to uh, just thank you for, for Jesus and just for the blood that he shed for us, dear Lord, in Calvary, just the... Uh, to pay the sin debt of, of, for our sins, past, present, and future. Dear Lord, just let us to take reflection now as to what, it would, what, what you meant at that upper room, dear Lord, that uh, the blood that you have shed for us. Amen. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. Let's stand together. We're going to have, we're going to have a amazing time grace. for uh, amazing grace. Amazing grace. And uh, after that, you are dismissed to go back to the back if you'd like to go back. There will be prayer for the food as those first ones enter in. And then we'll, we'll be dismissed. Soon as we sing, you're dismissed, all right? Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved us. Like me, I once was lost, but now I am found, was blind, but now I see, twas grace that my heart to fear and grace my fears relieve how precious did that grace appear the hour I first believe. Amen, Brother Dave. Amen. You are dismissed at this time, and you can head out to, to the back, I hope, for a chili dinner by donation. Lots of Christmas Here. presents back there for the silent auction. Love to have you take part in that for Nicaragua. For the... Uh,